Uh, <laughs> I'll start with uh, um, introducing you to the team. the rabbits are flying through the renaissance or wrestling king arthur this hilarious party game is a blast in the past rating rabbits travel in time rated everyone 10 and up now i i want you to pay attention to this this guy with the beard at the bottom we had to let him go he was no, was not an effective project manager and i know some of you are in the process of selecting products now he went to work for teradata so uh, be be careful please All right, so a little bit about Ubisoft. Um, we started in 86. Uh, we, we have the uh, second largest uh, production studio in the world, second to uh, our nemesis, Electronic Arts. Um, we're in, we have 24 studios in 17 different countries. We have uh, subsidiaries in 26 countries, uh, distribution in 55. We have close to 6,500 people now, and a large percentage of those are uh, collaborators or the people that actually developed the games. Um, sales last year were 871 million, and we're both uh, NCSA and EMEA are ranked number three in the world as independent publishers. I'll pause for just a moment. Um, I, I think Gardner will. Uh, provide these slides to you, but just in case, if you want to jot down the, some of the uh, games on the right, there's, there's a mall next door and there's a GameStop there as well. <laughs> so uh, feel free to pick up anything you like. But as you can see, the, uh, we have uh, uh, quite a few units uh, sold live today. I often get the question, uh, what are your games? Uh, it's unusual that people don't often recognize the publisher, they just recognize the, the property itself. And uh, I think that's a good thing, all right? So I'll tell you a little bit about our mission and objectives. And uh, there's, there's no particular uh, story behind this cowboy. I just saw the picture and liked it. And, and apologizing for my accent, I spent a lot of time in Texas as well, too. So uh, I'll tell you what the old cowboy said. And uh, if you need translation, uh, I'll just raise your hand and I'll let you know. But what he said is, uh, y'all can lead a horse to water, but before and you do, uh, remember what a wet horse smells like. And has, how many of you have smelled a wet horse? OK, not very many. So uh, gym socks, rotten eggs, spoiled milk, something like that. So uh, the story behind the phrase is typically uh, uh, because MDA, MDM sure ain't easy, all right? Uh, we did, however, find a way to make it easier. So to give you a little bit about uh, the distributed organization that we were dealing with, um, production, distribution, and legal. Uh, and this is, uh, this is meant to describe to you the complexity of, of doing this, and, and toward the end, you'll see how it was actually made slightly easier. So the, the key business issues, as you can imagine, uh, with that many different entities is that uh, the teams are in silos. Uh, and I'll give you just a, a snippet about that in a moment. Uh, multiple geographies and uh, multiple languages. So we, we use English as the, uh, the international language for Ubisoft. Um, I, I've learned broken French, uh, not very good at it. Uh, each function is uh, managed by its, they manage their own master data, or they might slightly manage it with another entity. And it's across the, the three different organizations as well. And as you can imagine, there's, there's, there's no single view and, and little governments whatsoever. So 
Uh, the reason I, I said little is because um, people would argue that they did have some. Uh, and the, uh, the last piece is that uh, if you imagine that we're a very creative organization, the way Eve established groups is smaller teams, widely distributed, and the idea is that the, the smaller teams drive more innovation throughout their culture. So it, it may not apply to you, however, it's just something to consider as you embark upon this journey, uh, you, you may also have to deal with, with people and the culture of the company as well. So the, the core data hierarchies that, that we attacked, and I've heard it quite a few times during this conference, uh, keep them small and, and relevant to things that are, that are MDM applicable. You just you can't apply it to everything. So a few of the attributes in each of these cores um, we, we described the product itself, U unique ID, short and long names. Uh, they're linked to budgets, types, and the status of the project. The product itself, uh, franchise, brand, family, uh, stock keeping unit, and they're also linked to the project. And then the contracts, uh, from a legal standpoint, have a type, a licensor, legal, territories. They're also linked to royalties and also linked to the product. Okay. Uh, this is a bit of an eye chart, but uh, this, this will give you a little exposure to the complexity. Now, if you notice, uh, we, we do have franchise, brand, and international code. This is a wiki that, that I tracked down last night that I know I saw somewhere, but if you'll notice something, in each and every one of these, you'll see things like AKA are also known as, and it, it will say EMA, it will say NCSA, you'll find headquarters, and then toward the, the bottom, you'll even have places where this is where a different entity called it a different thing uh, than someone else did either in headquarters or EMEA and NCSA. So right away you can see, you know, what, what are some of the, the issues that, that you're presented with is certainly, or, you know, describing where the problem, it's everywhere, okay? So to give you an idea of the data volumes that we have today that, that are uh, in the uh, process, we have 20,000 projects, uh, we have 35,000 products, and we have 2,500 contracts. Now a couple of the, uh, just to distinguish on a couple of the data points, um, you'll see that, that uh, there's a much lower number in projects than in budgets. That's because for certain projects that are sold around the world, you'll have a, a different budget for each and every implementation of those as they're spread out. And also on the contract side, um, you'll notice that the contracts and amendments are the same number. Uh, when have you ever seen a contract that didn't have some kind of amendment? It's, it's legal play. Uh, so this is how we map the organization and data for governance and relationships. And you'll see the, the production, distribution, and legal on the top, and then the project, uh, product, and contracts on the bottom. And you, you'll notice the dotted lines represent relationships, something that we've found uh, easy to do and model. Um, and then also it's easier to uh, enhance and maintain as well, too. So the, the business objectives, uh, we had both global and then also to the, uh, the different legs of groups that we were dealing with. So it, the idea is to establish uh, communication and collaboration between the functions. Um, we wanted global governance and for all business domains and in all countries. Um, we wanted to share a common view and, and definition of the core master data. And remember the slide, the wiki slide I showed you where everyone had a different name for everything. <clears throat> and we wanted to establish and streamline the uh, MDM integration with all of the existing IT applications, which I heard uh, Jean-Luc talk about uh, working forward to as well. And then for the individuals, uh, production wanted better project management, and they wanted to improve their game profitability. Distribution wanted uh, better reporting, and then legal wanted to tackle the, the ever-complex royalties process for reporting on that as well, too. Okay, uh, so the implementation itself, uh, common theme, uh, a centralized hub, um, 
place for authoring, sharing, collaborating, and keeping track of changes throughout the life cycle of those particular data hierarchies. So of course, uh, MDM is the, the hub for us. Um, and you'll see the places where, where we've actually taken it down to the next level and we're connecting to those entities that share the master data. So you'll see two different ERP systems, or actually three, uh, for studios, uh, NCSA and EMEA. There's a digital asset management system. Uh, there's also time reporting. So as you connect projects and products and their various names throughout the, the life cycle, you can see how you establish the connecting points. Now you can also uh, tie back to the, uh, the hub where desired. And all of these are, are provided through fairly simple and easy to use interfaces as well. So the, the key requirements for the business was make it simple. Now, uh, some people will say, well, you're implementing this and, it, and it's going to take uh, a lot more people, a lot more time to do, do certain things. Well, uh, I would counter that with people were doing that anyway, and they were doing it differently. So uh, you provide a, a very creative culture with a very simple way to uh, maintain master data. It's a pretty easy win. Uh, they don't really care about master data, they care about the results that they use. They're, they're, uh, they don't want it to get in the way of their, their real work, which is, is creating fun for people. Uh, it, we use it for complex authoring and hierarchy management. Uh, the, uh, one of the uh, most amazing pieces was it was, um, it was very easy to train people. They were essentially self-trained. We had uh, a Word document, some slides, uh, the product was so easy to get familiar with that we didn't have to spend nearly as much time as we thought in training people how to use it. And of course, it's, you're teaching them how to, to do a piece of work, but they're also doing it through an enabler that uh, is almost invisible to them. And uh, people love the, the web-based architecture and, and structure and interfaces as well, too. As, and uh, the embedded workflow enabled both uh, uh, stewardship and collaboration. And what that means is sometimes you own it and sometimes you're part of the process that does something with it. Okay? Um, they, they want it to be user friendly and I can't stress enough the, the no IT required to use it. Um, uh, people don't typically like to come to you with a question and then wait uh, for you to define, to define it, to uh, build it, to test it, uh, it takes a long time. Uh, in this process, it, it's all model-driven functionality. So the, uh, it, it makes creation and collaboration of complex data models. And you can see as you go from you know, the game and all of its artifacts that that can become quite onerous. So uh, you can track the, the full uh, product life cycle. You can create the complex attributes and hierarchies, and it actually has a, an invisible uh, validation and quality rules. So it, it just is seamless for people to use. Uh, they wanted it to be agile-like, uh, and I, I think the, uh, the term's overused. They just wanted it to be fast. Um, there's more of an iterative process that we used in this, but. I think they just weren't wanting one of those typical um, uh, waterfall approach uh, implementations that takes 18 months. They wanted something faster than that. And the, the product provides rapid prototyping results. Uh, and and the, the even better part is uh, what you model is actually what you see when it's completed. Uh, we had some uh, quite a few efficient global workshops along with uh, ease of use and delivering the quick wins through the product, and that uh, generated wrapper and user adoption. 